Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a question of the day, Tip Tuesday. I have been getting a lot of questions lately from wig sisters that um, I think may be easier to answer in a video because I think so many people probably have the same question. Today's question has come from multiple people and it's from new, typically from new wig wearers who don't have a lot of experience with wigs and they want to know, are wigs hot or what wigs can they wear that will be less hot than other wigs? So I'm going to attempt to answer this question with a couple of examples and my own personal experience with this topic, which is extensive since I am one of those people who runs hot all the time. So if this is something you're wondering about, then stick around for the rest of this video. Wearing wigs can be very challenging. If you are new to wig wearing, I am sure that you're feeling overwhelmed right now at everything that there is to know. I think when we start wearing wigs, sometimes we think it's just simple. You just find a wig, you put it on your head, you're good. But as you delve into this a little bit, you start to realize how complicated it can be. There is a lot to know. There's different types of caps, different types of hair fibers, different styles, different sellers. There's just a lot to know. So I have created a new wig wear series here on YouTube. It is eight episodes long and it covers just about everything I think a new wig wearer needs to know. You may think eight episodes is a lot. It was a lot, but it, there's a lot to know. And, and if you want to be the most successful and spend the least amount of money doing it, then I do think it's worth it to educate yourself before you just start buying wigs willy nilly like I did and end up spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to figure it out on your own. Today, I didn't cover this, actually I didn't cover this topic at all in that new wig wear series. It, to me it's a little bit more of an ancillary topic. It's something that's important and certainly on a lot of people's minds as evidenced by the questions that I'm getting, but it isn't necessarily something that we think of in the very beginning. And that is how hot are wigs? And if you're someone who is very concerned about that, what are the best wigs to get to help you deal with that? Now, this, as in everything that I share, is a lot personal opinion. A lot of these topics are very subjective. It's based on personal preference, personal experience. We are complex beings and uh, all of us are a little bit different in all of these things. So if you're someone who tends to run cold a lot, you are always wearing a sweater, you don't get overheated easily, you love super hot weather, then this may not be as much of a concern for you as someone who is always hot, even in the dead of winter, who, uh, just is miserable when it gets super hot in the summer because you run so hot as it is. That is me. And I am someone who, I live in Minnesota and I prefer the cooler seasons. I just really, really struggle with the heat. I'm always very hot. So wigs have been a particular challenge for me because of that. And so this is based a lot on what I've learned and, and what works best for me. <coughs> Excuse me, but if someone else has any Thing to share on this topic, please leave it in the comments. Help a wig sister out. Give them something else, some other opinion, some other experience so that they can start to gather all of the information. What I have on my head right now is Finn by Aesthetica. This is in the color Iced Mocha. Finn is one of my favorite, favorite wigs. I wear this wig all the time. I love this wig. When I don't wear Finn is in the summer. I, I really cannot take this much hair and this much permatees in the summer, I find it too hot. So I wear the heck out of it in the winter and then I put it away until fall comes and we, and we hit some cooler weather. And I'm sure you're wondering, why is that? Well, I'll tell you. So Finn has a lot of hair and a lot of permatees. And that is one of the worst things that you can wear if you tend to run hot or the weather is really hot. Let's think about this logically. When we're kids, we're told to wear a hat when it's cold out. Why are we told that? Because the majority of your body heat escapes through your head. And when you wear a hat in the winter, you help to contain that body heat. Wigs work similarly. You put a wig on your head and it can act like a hat and hold in your body heat. The more hair a wig has, the more permatease a wig has, 
the more it acts like a hat. Permatease, for those of you who maybe have not watched my new wig wearer series, uh, is um, it's like nesty, crimpy fibers that give a wig body and volume, and it also helps to hide the cap. It hides where the hair is sewn into the wefts so that you can't see down to cap and down to scalp. It has some fabulous benefits, and some of us I think the majority of wig wearers, we've got like a love-hate relationship with permatease. Sometimes it's awesome and we want lots of volume and lots of hair and it does help hold styles and help make curly wigs look really awesome, but sometimes it can be a bit much. So let's talk about the permatease on Finn. So Finn has a lot of permatease right up here at the top of your head. All of this up here is nesty full permatease. And so the airflow does not escape through that permatease very easily. It really does feel, it's like a hat. I cannot, I've got, there's a, let me just take it off and show you. There is a, um, a layer of lace material here. There's a bunch of permatease in there. So you've got hair, permatease, and this. That is not allowing a lot of airflow to go through the wig. Now, it is a wefted wig. So wefting is these right here that you can go right through. It's what the hair is sewn on. Now, wefted wigs will have a lot more airflow than closed cap wigs that have material all over that wefting. But it airflow can be inhibited by permatease and by hair volume. So when you have a wig that's high volume and high permatease, you're essentially putting a hat on your head. So I do not recommend heavy wigs like this if you are uncomfortable when it's hot outside or if you get hot really easily. Sometimes Finn is too much for me in the winter even. If I'm doing a lot of physical activity, I won't tend to wear a wig like this, not just because having the hair hanging down can be a, a challenge, but because I get so warm when I have it on. Now, contrast that and the length. Anything where the, the hair covers your neck and you saw Finn was down on my shoulders, now you've also put a layer all around this part of your body holding in the heat and helping to contribute to a higher body temperature. Contrast that with a wig like this one. This is Ellen Villa Flare Mono. This one is short, so your neck is exposed. It has very low density. I mean, you know, when I squeeze both of these together, you can just see. Let me turn Finn inside out so that you can kind of see a side-by-side -side comparison. I want to drop everything on the floor over here. I mean, just look. Look at how much I can squeeze this one and how thick, how much thicker this one is. A lot more hair on this one. Flare Mono is low density, little to no permatease. Any permatease that Flare Mono has, and I don't even know if she has any, is like uh, almost back comb fibers. It's not nesty, pillowy, thick. And so when I put Flare Mono on, it's just cooler. I mean, I can feel it just already. Cooler, lighter. My neck is not exposed. I'm getting good airflow because there is very little hair to impede the airflow through these wefts. There is enough that I am not even remotely worried that you're going to see through to the wefting. I can go outside on a windy day and it can blow all around and it's just fine, but it's giving me good airflow. Now, that said, this is still something on your head. It still is inhibiting heat escape a little bit. So you're never going to fully eliminate that if you're wearing a full cap wig but it helps a lot, um, kind of almost night and day. To me, something like this is the next best thing to not wearing a wig for me. Now, I'm going to talk about toppers, and I have a topper to show you, which would be the next best thing, but I can't wear toppers, and so they're not an option for me, and for some of you, they're not an option. Your option is wigs or hats or bald or buzzed, you know, very little hair, and I, I liken wearing a wig like Finn to wearing a baseball cap. This one, to me, is even cooler than wearing a baseball cap. So prior to losing my hair, well, no, 
I can't even say prior to losing my hair because I've been losing my hair since I was in my early 20s and I'm 50 now. But prior to um, wigs, one of my solutions was wearing a baseball cap. I wore baseball caps a lot. I dreaded wearing baseball caps in the summer because they made me so incredibly hot. I liken that to wearing a wig like Finn. I feel that they made me almost equally hot. Finn makes me hotter because it's got the added hair, it covers my neck, all of that, but not a ton. And so I would say if you are familiar with wearing baseball caps, uh, a wig can be similar to that. The level of that will really depend on you. And so I find a wig like this cooler then I would find a baseball cap if that helps you at all to envision that. So if you can get yourself to a place where you can wear shorter wigs, they don't have to be this short, but having hair off your neck, even, even um, if it were longer here, having all that hair hanging down really does make a difference and impacts how cool you feel. And so I've worked hard for almost four years to get to the point where I can wear a wig this short. I could not do this for the first few years of my journey. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you can't. But I do think if this is something you suffer from, it is well worth your time to work toward it. How do you do that? You just wear them. You put a, you find one that you can sort of deal with the style and then you wear it. You wear it around the house. You look in the mirror. You practice styling it. You put accessories in it. You Whatever it is you can do to get yourself to the point where you don't feel terrible wearing it, that's going to help you. It's going to give you other options. So absolutely, the weight of the wig, the density of the wig, the amount of permatease makes a huge difference. Getting yourself to a place where you can wear the lightest, shortest wig possible is going to help you with that. I can wear flare mono on a day when I'm really warm and I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to die or and that's dramatic. But I mean, you know what I mean? When you're so hot and you're sweating and you shouldn't be, you're not doing physical activity, you've got makeup on, you're maybe at an event, there's almost nothing worse. It's really horrible. So definitely consider working your way toward lower density. I would say when you're buying a wig, watch reviews and see what they say about permatease. And I would say, look at the weight of the wig. Anything over three and a half ounces, you're starting to get into some denser, heavier wigs. Four ounces for sure. Um, anything kind of three, two to three ounces, now you've got a super light wig and that's going to be better for you. Let's talk about another option. So toppers, and I actually have a headband wig here too, which I'll discuss because they are weird. And actually I feel really cool when I have a headband wig on, even if they've got a higher density of hair. So let's talk about toppers. I have a topper here. This is um, Raquel Welch top billing 12 inches so it's a little bit of a longer and it's got a, a decent size cap on it you can get toppers with so many you can get teeny teeny tiny little toppers that are just going to cover like right here if you're starting to thin at the part line you can get toppers that are almost a full cap wig they're the, the base is so huge this one is a good um for kind of moderate hair loss this is a good uh top piece that will cover the top of your head but what's great about it is the density is low very low lower than you're going to get in even a short wig like this, because it's not covering your entire head, it's only meant to sort of give you some fill in on the top and it doesn't have any permatease. And then you've only got this little bit kind of covering the top of your head. So while I can't wear this, obviously, let me just demonstrate for you kind of what it covers on my head. So when I put this topper on, as silly as it is, I mean, it's really just covering up here. So all back here, all on the sides, sorry guys, it's kind of ridiculous, I know, but you know, for my visual learners out there, this is important to see. So the topper is just right here. So I think if you can wear toppers, even if it's only sometimes, it may be worth it to get a topper that you can blend with your own hair because in an event that you have to wear a wig and you're going to be outside and you know it's going to be hot. Let's say you're going to a wedding and you're gonna be sitting outside and the sun's gonna be beating on you. It may be worth it even if you can't wear a topper most of the time or choose not to. And so for my wig sisters out there considering buzzing their hair off, if you have hair that can blend and you struggle with this, before you buzz your hair off and get that point of no return, 
you can always grow back. Um, maybe try the topper route. I did that. It did not work for me. So the first year that I wore wigs, I started wearing wigs in September and I was so worried about summer coming and being hot because I was already hot in wigs in the winter. And so I had purchased a couple of toppers that I was struggling to make work and I hung on to them until summer came because I wanted to see if they would help me be cooler. And I First of all, I have super sensitive scalp, so the clips, just I couldn't do them. They pulled no matter how I put them on. I always felt them pulling my hair. I really, really struggled to blend my own hair with toppers color-wise and just my baby, my cotton candy hair. If you're losing a, quite a bit of hair, you know what I mean. I really struggled with it. So toppers were just never an option for me, but I did try it. And so it may be worth it. It could be better for you. Now, the last wig I brought to show is a headband wig. I have got a video out there where I talk about headband wigs. I'm looking for my wig grip here where I talk about headband wigs. You can buy cheap wigs on eBay. That's where I go for mine. And um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a headband wig because you don't see much of the wig. Here's what I do with headband wigs. I put a wig grip on, which the only time I wear wig grips and you can search around for the lightest, thinnest wig grip you can find. This one's just a Milano wig grip. I got it on Amazon. And then I put my headband wig on. Now look at this. This is a cheap headband wig. I think I paid like 40 some dollars for it. I've had it for a number of years. I wish the seller still sold these because I love them. And they have big spaces between the wefts. So sometimes in these cheaper wigs, look how tight the wefting is on this one. The wefting on this one is much wider. You will find that on the cheaper wigs. You know, they're made just a little bit more economically. They use less wefting. That's going to give you a lot more hair flow through that wefting, the wider apart those wefts are. So then I throw this on. Again, I will link the video where I talk about headband wigs. So you can go see that if you haven't seen it. And then, and this is a three-fourths wig, and I talk about that in my video. This is, does it have a front part? It's just this. That is huge because it's so much less cap on my head, and then I'm a lot cooler. And since you don't see this part, I don't need all that front part of the wig. And so I love it. Then I just throw a headband on. Any cloth headband will do. You just toss your headband on. get it arranged, and there you go. So this looks super realistic. Nobody's ever gonna know that you have a headband on. Some women love to put their ears under the headband. I don't like that, personally. I don't like the way it looks on me, so I just tuck it all behind my ears. That's it, and I cannot explain it, but I almost don't feel like I have anything on my head when I wear a headband wig. I can tolerate heat when I wear a headband wig. So I do this a lot in the summer. If I don't need to look great, I'm not going to any fancy event, I'm just running around, I'm hanging out at home, I'm in the yard, I'm going, I don't know, to a barbecue or whatever, I might do this if I know it's gonna be super, super hot outside, and it, maybe if it's gonna be windy, things like that. What For whatever reason, when I throw a headband on, even though I've got a layer, I have multiple layers, I have a wig grip, I have the headband, I have the wig, even though I've got multiple layers, I'm still cooler than almost even than when I wear like a short wig like this. It could be the sweat wicking properties of a wig grip and all of that. I really don't know the science behind it. I can just tell you from many years of experience, I almost always wear it this way if I know it's going to be really hot outside and I don't need my hair to look great. I just know I'm going to be able to tolerate the heat a little bit better. Now, are there other options out there? Quite possibly. If you know of any, please share them. But I am a full-time wig wearer. I'm not going to be able to wear toppers. I don't like wearing a hat um, when I have no hair. It just makes me look like I'm a cancer patient, quite frankly. People think I'm sick if I put a hat on, like a baseball cap, and I've got no hair under it. You, It may be different for you. So maybe you find a cute hat of some sort that you can wear and you don't wear a wig at all. Maybe you're just comfortable enough rocking the bald look or the shaved, buzzed hair look. There are women who are gorgeous with their hair like that and are super comfortable doing that. That may be something worth working toward. I do not personally feel comfortable doing that. 
I just, I'm not afraid to take my wigs off in front of like other wig sisters or people when I'm talking about wigs. But if I'm just out at an event, I don't think I'll ever be that person who shows up with my buzzed head. I can't ever say never, but I'm not there yet and I don't anticipate getting there. So that is an option though. You can certainly go that route. But in the meantime, if you're new to wig wearing and you're worried about the heat and you're worried about wigs being hot, wigs will be a little bit hot. How hot they are will depend on you, depend on the circumstances, depend on the wig. I hope I've given you some ideas of wigs that you can try, shorter, lower density, headband wigs, toppers, that will mitigate the amount of heat that you experience and how uncomfortable you are with it. I will link whatever I can in the description if I have videos, if I have reviews of any of these, for sure my headband review. Um, I don't have any good headband wigs to direct you toward right now. I'm actually working, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about seeing if there's a way I can find a manufacturer to make me some three-fourths wigs like this that I can actually sell because I cannot find good ones out there um, that aren't super wiggy or super uncomfortable. These are just amazing and I just wish that sellers still sold them. So anyway, let me know if you guys have questions. Let me know if this helped you. If you have other questions, look for some more of these question of the day tip Tuesdays. If I don't have an actual tip Tuesday where I show you how to modify a wig or something, then maybe I'll start throwing some of these out there because I get a ton of questions. I think I probably get 20 to 30 questions almost every day from wig sisters looking for advice. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you're someone waiting for me to answer a question, I apologize. I am going to try to do more of these videos because that way I can just say, hey, I made a video on that and then I don't have to do a long drawn out answer. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I love you guys and I just want to help you with all my heart. And so anything I can do, let me know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.